Hello, I think I'm ready to do this. This is the first video I've ever filmed of myself in my face. <laughs> um, I wanted to show you how I do my box braids. Um, as a white girl <laughs> who has smooth hair, I've tried all the different ways that I've seen on YouTube. Um, you know, the, the rubber band method and the starting with um, the yarn in two, you know, in, in a single bundle and so you've got two legs of yarn and then one leg of your hair and I've tried splitting my hair into three and then having the yarn into three and all different methods and the only one that I have found that works to keep my yarn in my hair and keep it from slipping down and like bunching up funny is um, the knotless box braid method which is basically a feed-in braid without the cornrow. Um, it was something that I kind of figured out on my own and then just recently I found that there are other videos on YouTube but they're all done by black ladies and they're fantastic at it and they're oh my gosh and they always look amazing um, which mine don't. I do my own. They're done with yarn. Um, I end up with little hairs that stick out and I get fuzzies up here when I'm, you know, after a few days. Um, but I do really messy styles with my braids. So it seems to work for me. If anybody's got any ideas for how my hair can stay, you know, nice and smooth and laid down properly, I'd love to hear it. But I just end up with a fuzzy head all the time. So anyway, I figured I would show you how I do, uh, how I start my braids and also how I end my braids. I do feathered tips on my yarn braids, which I have only seen a video, one other video where the people do that. And let me see, gosh, it doesn't wanna, it doesn't wanna focus, but anyway. You can see it's it's like when when you use the Kanekalon hair and stretch it out properly and um, then you can braid all the way down to the end and then you get this nice pretty point. Um, so I'll show you how I do that. And also I wanted to show you an interesting property of the yarn. Um, can you see how it corkscrews? I I think doing a hot water dip, like a you know boiling water dip, and and you know squeezing the water out and letting it dry straight will probably take that out. But I really like the corkscrewiness. It makes my messy, like half up ponytail bun thingy. I, it gets all over the place, and then I've got these fun corkscrews that fly all over. So I like that. <laughs> So, okay, I am going to show you um, how I section, how I get my braids started, and how I get them finished. Okay, I'm going to switch this to, I guess I can't switch it on while I'm going. So I'm going to show I'm moving my tripod. Okay, supplies. Can we see them? I'm having a difficult time. All right, I've got this clear pro style clear ice gel that cost me like a buck at Meyer or something. I've got my water in a um, pressurized misting bottle. This one was made for like cooking oil at the stove, and I just used it used water water with it. Um, this is my sectioning comb. I bought a comb at the dollar store and like broke the crap out of it. I use this point here, that one, for my sectioning. Scissors, and then a nice sturdy comb with close teeth. These are, you know, men's pocket combs, that, the unbreakable kind that you can get at any store, pretty much. And then we've got my mirror, oh gosh. And here's my yarn. Um, I use a 
a Nitty Knotty, which is a tool that spinners use to um, skein off the yarn that they've spun. And I use that to measure my yarn out, so one complete wrap on the Nitty Knotty is, is a complete length of my yarn. Um, and I've been having fun using gradient cakes of yarn, like from Hobby Lobby or Joann's. Um, you can see the neat colors on this. So those first four colors, well, these four colors here are all from one gradient cake and then the darker, the, the heathered gray on the other end, that's just plain acrylic yarn from Hobby Lobby. So um, I get it all measured out on the Nitty Natty and get it cut and then I separate it out into basic color groups. You can see how they're, you know, they, they blend into each other. So I just try and separate it out as best I can because I really like the multicolored braids. Um, like I, I tell people this is exciting hair for poor people because I, um, uh, I can't afford to dye my hair and I don't really want to anyway. It's too damaging and permanent and it doesn't seem like it would be a good time. Okay, so I am going to use the camera as my mirror here. <laughs> um, and it's hard for me to look at the lens while I'm looking at what I'm doing. So I'm not going to look like I'm talking to you. I'm just going to look like I'm staring off into space. Okay, so I do a half moon sectioning. And I'm not super precise. Like I said, I don't manage to get really nice, you know, edges that stay nice. And... Um, and I end up getting fuzzy and stuff just going everywhere, so I don't... And I have to do the back myself, because I've got nobody around that wants to help me, and... So, um... I just do my best. Which isn't the greatest, but it's still better than nothing. And that's too thick. I try and go for a thickness that's, once braided up, it's going to be a little bit thicker than the, you know, the only yarn braid at the end. Oh heck, there's a bump there. But, um, but yeah, you don't want it too thick because then you'll end up with a really big difference. Please pardon my scabby scalp here. I have um, dermatillomania, but it's focused on my scalp. I tend to pick at ugh, anything that sticks out on my scalp, which means flakes, scabs, odd hairs. It's probably probably why I have such fuzzy hair most of the time is um, when I'm not picking at the skin I end up picking at my hairs. So. I know, it's weird. Drives my fiancé nuts. He's like, can't you stop picking? He's like, no, I can't. Okay, so I've got my little half moon section here and I'm going to take my gel and just do a little bit here at the roots um, and I don't know if this is necessary it's something that I saw done you know somebody said well here if you're you know if your white girl wanted to do box braids use gel and water so that's what I do I don't know if it actually does anything so I've got gel at the roots and then I put a little bit at the tips and then I'm going to dampen the whole thing because ah, my stylist cousin told me that gel won't get crunchy if you use it with water or on damp hair. So that's what I'm doing. All right, so I got that all worked through and I'm going to get my yarn. So I only use three full strands braid. Sorry, you're having to look at my, 
my super cool shirt with Sailor Freddie Mercury. Ha. Okay, I've got my yarn and I'm just going to separate each strand and fold it in half. Okay, ends are matched up. I've got my my midpoint there and I'm just going to lay that out in front of me so that I can grab it easily right at that folded midpoint. Okay. Hooray! Alright, so I've got those sectioned out and um, most of my hairstyles are like ponytail bun type so they just go up. I don't really worry about what direction my braids are laying because like I said, after, well, once my hair grows like for three days, it's they're all loose anyway, so they just go any which way you want them anyway. So I don't worry about it. But if you are persnickety about that, by all means, be careful which way you pull your braids when you braid them or have somebody else do it so that they can all go in the proper directions. Because cause it's always nice if you can be precise. I am a great appreciator of precision, just not with this kind of hairstyle. Okay, so I've got my three strands that are basically equal, and I'm going to do like one, two, three, four twists. Okay, and I'm going to stop with this one being the next one that I need to put over. And I'm holding the middle one in between my two fingers. Now I'm going to take my yarn and I'm going to pinch that midpoint with those two fingers so I've got one half of the strand going with this one that I have to put over next and the other half of the strand going with this one that's gonna be like the third one that I do. Okay so I'm gonna take this and pop it over, grab this with the yarn and keep braiding a few times. So my goal is to end with this one in this position but I'm gonna do a little bit more so that it's anchored in well. Four, five, and six. Okay, so we've got this one that doesn't have any yarn on it um, in the position to receive the next strand of yarn. So I've got, all right, looks like I've got my middle strand in between these two fingers this time. I never do anything the same way every time, especially with hair stuff. I'm so bad at the hair stuff. Okay, so this one's gonna go next. So I'm gonna go over, slide these out of the way and see I've got two strands on this one now. That's the only one with two strands because we've only got two things of yarn in right now. So these each have one strand and that one's got two. So we want to end this next round with, you know, these two in, in this position so that they will receive the next two legs of yarn. But like I said, I'm going to go down a little bit more um, just so we're not like beefing up the, the braid right away. This single strand yarn gets so tangly sometimes. Definitely a con for using it. Okay, there we are. We've got two strands over here, one strand and one strand. And here, can we see? We're starting to get some yarn peeking through the braid, but not a lot. And so it's gonna, it's gonna do like an ombre effect. So you're gonna have your natural hair color at the top and it'll gradually change to the yarn color more toward the bottom. My hair is a lot shorter now than it was when I used to do this before. And so um, I will have much more of the color that I want and a lot less of my own hair color in the style. Okay, so we're going to pinch that at the middle. Get this here. And get that over there. Okay, and just keep braiding. And I know this is this is the boring part because I am not a fast braider. 
I'm, I'm a good braider. <laughs> I do nice, consistent, tight braids, but I'm not very fast at it. So, and I'm in my bird room right now, so it's rather warm. Not particularly humid. So my hair is drying out as I work. So I can just take my little spray bottle here and just kind of mist it so that it's not quite so flyy away. And that can help with the, if your yarn is um, staticky, then it will tame that too. My gosh, you should have seen it last night when I was cutting it in my house, I guess. My house is even more staticky than out here. It was all flying all over the place and sticking to me and fun, fun times. Sounds well, like it is nap time for everybody but the budgies right now. Can you hear them warbling around back there? Okay. I want to keep going until I've cleared my own hair here because um, once I'm past my hair then I can knot it off and, and just finish it up later. I have to take my son to an appointment today so it'll be something that I can do while I'm just sitting there and finish braiding. Since that's ten what I tend to do when I'm just sitting someplace anyway, I'll just mess around with my hair and braid it up and unbraid it and braid it up again in an attempt to not stare at my phone all the time. Okay, so I am coming to the ends here and this is when I like to make sure that I need to pressurize this. I like to make sure that the ends are nice and damp so they'll stick together and I try and make sure that they all get like tucked into the braid but it's really hard with my hair because it's I've got really straight hair and it doesn't like to stick to things and um, it just wants to poke out at the ends so I do my best and I do end up with pokey and you know pokey ends sticking out and I'll probably have to have my daughter help me do like a final trimming on this once I'm done. But thankfully, they're both pretty good with that kind of thing. Okay. So there's. Can you see all of the sticky outies there? <laughs> So once I get to this point, if I'm feeling lazy, I won't bother doing this, but um, I can take my scissors, and this is a really difficult angle to do this at, um, I'll just try and trim off these sticky outy ends. It helps if you can get, uh, if you can get right up against the braid with the scissors, but I don't want to. I don't want to cut through it either, so I've got to be careful. Hmm. All right, so yeah, like I said, I'll have to get Amber or Emily to help me really get it good. Um, but that's most of it. Looks like, see, it's it's a little more cleaned up. It's not going to stick out quite so much. Okay, so. Um, I'm going to tie this off. So if you if you reach a point where you don't want to keep braiding um, and you just want to keep moving on and getting everything started so that you can just sit and braid and watch TV later, um, I just do a, a slip knot. So pinch it, wrap it around your fingers, and then tuck that ah, tuck the loop through the hole there and just slip it. Uh, nice and tight there. Can you see that? And then all I have to do is pull this end here and it'll pull the loop out and I can just keep going with the braid. Okay, so that is starting the braid. Now, okay, I'm back. 
we are I'm now going to show you how I finish my ends to do the feathered tips um, okay so I've braided it down to about that far and so my shortest piece is right here um, and my next shortest pieces are right about here so I'm gonna cut them all off right about there um, and then you see I've got three sections one two and three and I want you know I want the at least I want one um, yarn from each section to be long and then I want an, the second yarn to be about an inch and a half to two inches shorter so I'm gonna chop those off and those don't need to be as precise because we're gonna try and get them kind of feathered in okay so we've got our six strands three long three short one you know one of each per section and now we're gonna take our comb and we're just going to comb out and what this does is it actually does pull out about half of the fiber from the yarn. And that is what you want to do because what that's going to do is make it so that your tip will be progressively smaller and smaller as you continue braiding. So there we've got that. And here, let me see if I can... Get braiding into the frame here. All right, so I'm going to get my next one separated out here and finish with the braiding. The ends are a lot faster because they don't tangle. But doing the combing out is definitely the most time-consuming part of the whole process. Like, I can get a braid braided in maybe 15 minutes, just, you know, sitting there goofing around. But um, doing the end takes you know another 10 minutes and the setup gets into is another five minutes of you know sectioning and getting the hair put back where it needs to go to be out of the way and all right so once it gets really small like this i kind of have to like pinch it and then move the the pieces kind of into my pinched fingers Otherwise, it wants to twist on me, and I don't like that. So I'm pinching, moving that strand into the pinched fingers, and then I kind of just do a little, you know, flip with the other hand. Okay. And then, once we're down to just little itty-bitty wisps like that, I just take my fingers and bundle them together, and then I do this. And if this were wool yarn, that would felt the fibers together. It's not wool yarn though. You do not want wool yarn in your hair unless you want dreadlocks. Like really permanent ones. The wool will totally lock to your hair and you do not want that unless, well, unless you do, but I certainly don't. So I just give that a little rub that way until the fibers are, you know, kind of intermixed. And then I give it a roll, and then I've got that nice point. Okay, so that is my single strand yarn that I have from the gradient cakes. And that turns out pretty. But what if you're not using single strand? Pardon me. What if you're just using cheap, you know, Red Heart or I love this yarn stuff from a, you know, craft store. Um, it's basically the same thing. It just takes a little bit more work to get it to feather out. That's all. 
So I've got my six strands out here. Looks like our shortest and second shortest are the same length. So we're gonna do it like so. And there. Okay. And you'll see this, this will take a little bit more work because first you have to get it to unravel the plies of yarn. And sometimes I'll use the wider, wider tooth end for that. And sometimes it works well and sometimes it doesn't. And so I end up doing this, you know, in my room at night while my fiance is trying to watch TV. <laughs> and I'm making these horrible noises with the comb and shaking the bed around. And he's a very patient man. Let's put it that way. He puts up with a lot of weird crap from me. Okay, so I've got that pretty much all out of its plies and now I'm just going to keep combing until these here you see those longer bits they're eventually going to just come out and that's about when I know that I'm pretty much done is when those are out and I've got a nice fan of fibers like that and so that's that's all of what came out and so when I'm when I'm done with a significant number of braids, I've got a nice pile of loose fluff. <laughs> and then we just do like we did with the other one. And finish braiding it up. Sometimes you have to unbraid a little bit just to figure out which strands are which here. All right, we've got then got this looped around my ear so that the nitty knotty that i use it gives me braids that are approximately waist length um now if you were if you were using you know a set measurement like that to cut um synthetic hair you would end up with braids a lot longer than you do with um, yarn because with the Kanekalon, you're stretching it. You're pulling the ends kind of apart to feather them. Um, so you're adding length as you do that. Whereas with the yarn, you're actually combing off a considerable amount of your length, um, at least, you know, a few inches. All right, we're to that point where I need to pinch and twist. Okay. And we're down to that part and on the end. So I'm going to do my little fiber intermingling here. Get them all kind of tangled together and then give it a roll and a twist. And there's our nice feathered and I love how the braid just gets tinier and tinier and tinier but still stays nice and shiny. <laughs> so that's that. So there we are.